So just getting into a little bit of the, the details, uh, you know, we'll open some packet files uh, to do a little bit more of this. Uh, Multi-channel analysis, I think we've probably talked about this at least in previous years, but I know there's a few new delegates here. The nice thing about multi-channel and what we do with OmniPeak is we're able to actually capture from uh, multiple USB devices or multiple access points, uh, you know, at the same time if we want to. Um, the access point one isn't is interesting because you would just go put a bunch of those access points in promiscuous mode and they'd all just stream packets at us. You wouldn't set something you go pick in OmniPeak, uh, but when it comes to uh, picking from multiple adapters, uh, that's pretty straightforward. So we could come in and say we want to go start a new capture in OmniPeak. Is there any requirement that they have to be different adapters so that you could all have the same AE adapter? They could be different adapters. So, it, so do they have to be different or does oh, no, it no, matter no. at all? No, it doesn't matter at all. Same, they, different as long as they have the driver. Right. As long as they have the driver. So like you see here, right? So, you know, there's an Omni Wi-Fi and then two Linksys AE6000. Those are both, those are all connected to my machine. It doesn't matter which one. We could have an Atheros up there as well. Um, we could even have enabled a remote PCAP. Uh, device and, and capture from that as well. Uh, and the only thing that's different between remote PCAP when we do this and the locally connected devices is the locally connected devices, you know, we're going to choose our channel from, you know, from the pick list. Uh, whereas, checkbox. Yeah, yes, sir. Yep. Whereas with uh, the remote PCAP, that's still something you have to go set on the access point itself to, to set the right channel. But, you know, for the 3x3 MacBook, do you set it here or do you have to set it? when you set up the... I just figured that out today. <laughs> so At least I know what I know. Uh, we're st I'm still trying to figure out if there is a way to set the, uh, the channel specifically uh, on the MacBook or not. The way that I know how to do it at the moment is you choose a network. The network is associated with a particular channel, so by choosing the particular AP you're going to associate with on your Mac, that's going to determine the channel. But you can't choose a MAC address, you choose an SSID. That's right, yeah, you choose a, an SSID for, uh, for that network, and then in turn, that's going to change the channel on the, on the chipset, and then you- have you, to go close to the AP that's on the channel you want. So, uh, correct, yeah. Uh, at least that's what I say is I'm, I'm very new to this. That's what I know for now. Um, whereas a couple of us who are still trying to figure out, or maybe you, one of you guys know. You can throw the uh, uh, Apple into sniffer mode and select a channel. And it actually captures in the background. So you don't see the interactiveness. Right. And then open up in Wireshark. You could do that today. Right. And I, and, and I didn't get to talk to Chris uh, about that. I knew we could do that, but I wasn't sure if that would also work on the TCP, you know, right, yeah. How does that side. interact? So that? we yeah. need to test that. But I, I, yeah, that's the one thing we want to go test. And the other thing, okay. what we've done with TCP dump is the new block. enough that we really haven't had time to even go interact with the Apple guys about it. But, you know, there's, you know, 10 or 20 engineers at Apple that use OmniPeak a lot as well. And now that we know this works, we want to go show it to them and then find out a few more things like, hey, can you tell us an easier way to go set the channel other than, you know, trying to find a, a network that's got that channel assigned to it so it'll tell, you know, that's, that's, that's a little wonky. Maybe, so, maybe oh. Peter will do a blog entry on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, nice out multi-channel, you know, real straightforward. And, and Encompass now, we show channels so we can see we're capturing from all the channels at the same time. You know, really straightforward. It, it, with Compass, it's really nice because we can go then just pick certain channels if we want to see how certain channels are contributing to our overall average throughput. We can do that, or we can just get rid of the average in general and see how different channels are behaving. Um, and that's probably what we would have expected. I don't think anybody's on six, uh, not on not on WPDMZ at least. That's even if any of you are on WPDMZ. Um, so I'm not, not for sure. long. <laughs> not sure if we ever got there. Um, not to bring up a sore point, but. Uh, uh, Sorry about that. So uh, that's multi-channel analysis. Jay, real quick, on the, we had this discussion offline. Was the uh, CRCs? Mm -hmm. um, does 8.0? There was some question whether or not it's the access point side or the wild uh, wild packet side with the CRC. So when we do our APs, we have our captures going. We see gaps of frames that are just CRCs through the roof. 
they stop and then they come back again sometimes. And uh, in one specific capture, we actually have a device that got deauthenticated. Uh, the user called me, went right to the packet capture, which was great, went right to the time frame. It was the only D off I seen from this user the entire day, so I know it was that. And it showed up as a CRC, uh, which I don't believe it was a CRC because she actually got disconnected, you know? Right. And then I tried to do some comparison between what the AP was showing as CRCs and what the software, but it's real difficult to do that. Were you on this exact AP that she was on? What's that? Were you on this AP that she was on? Yes. Hmm. Yep. So okay. the sniffer in that area is on that channel that that group is on. So the testers that are in that group, when she called, we can then go through the packet capture. She tells me a, a time frame, which is great about this product is because now you can have the captures sit remotely, go through, find it, do my filter just on her MAC address, do a filter on deauthentication, only frame it comes up, CRC, and uh, it's almost identical to the time that she sent me the email. But you're, you're using How could it be sniffing and it was the same AP she was on? Because I have two APs. I have one AP that's just in sniffer mode. So, so you weren't on the AP that she was on? Well, I was on the same channel as the AP, sorry. Because I, 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 I've seen when that AP isn't exactly the same AP, that it will report a CRC where the real AP didn't see it. Didn't see it. It, got, it, right. it cleaned it up. Yeah, and I'm, I'm really close, too. I want to say uh, these APs are, God, I want to say, you know, 10 feet apart. Oh, yeah. So that's, I, I've seen it when they're far, far apart, but right, yeah. 10 feet, that's, yeah. After yeah. we met in Houston, I did put it in the database, and then you looked at it, and actually we looked at it this morning at the Houston Tech Conference, and they said, it's assigned to a vendor bot. Yeah, so we, like we've, really the but we've been working with, we've been trying to work with Cisco on it. Cisco is aware of it, and they're trying to help us to, to figure out what's going on. We do think it's on their side. I mean, positive, but from everything we've looked at so far, we think it's on their side, and they're also looking at it to try and figure out why. Uh, there's also periods of times where sometimes it just seems to drop out in general, uh, never mind report CRC errors. And yeah, they actually follow the bug for that. Yeah, and yeah, they acknowledge yeah, yes. that was their right, problem. Right, right. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. The, the bug, this particular problem of, uh, yeah, anyway, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cisco knows, and we'll continue to work with them about it. So, you know, roaming is also, you know, uh, you know, a nice analysis option within OmniPeak, uh, where, you know, we can watch roaming, all different perspectives, uh, you know, it can happen for many different reasons, uh, and, you know, people move around, but roaming can cause problems for them, right? So, the nice thing is we can look at it, uh, you know, by individual log, we can look at it by AP, we can look at it by node, if we look at it by AP, uh, we'll give you an average roam time, uh, you know, for those APs, so you can kind of get a feel for, you know, where is it maybe too long, you know, uh, I'm not sure where this packet file came from originally for the screenshot, but 250 milliseconds is kind of too long. Um, so, you know, this is either an older packet file from the days when, you know, there wasn't so much, you know, 2.11 R, or there really is something wrong, odds are it's an older file. Um, but it, you know, the, what we do with roaming is very nice. We've actually expanded a little bit of the roaming capability over time, and we're always interested in more feedback on roaming. <coughs> and one thing we find with it is uh, customers tend to want roaming analyzed differently depending on each customer. Um, so, you know, we, we now do it from uh, an act to act. We also do it from data packet to data packet. You know, trying to find, you know, last in, you know, last on the new one, first on the new one, but we're open to other, you know, other methods as well, um, if that happens. The nice thing about roaming is it used to be just an add-on, a plug-in, now it's built into uh, OmniPeak as well, built into the aggregator. So, uh, once you do multi-channel, roaming just automatically is enabled, and you're able to see the roaming. We also have a, uh, a threshold in which if the roaming uh, you know, latency is too high, it'll generate an event. So you can, you know, instead of just looking at roaming logs all day long, you, know, you could actually uh, either watch the events all day long or set it up to send you those uh, events in our normal event uh, 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 export mechanisms like SNMP traps or email or whatever. So it could tell you if roaming was roaming times were getting too long and then our experts um we we looked at experts real briefly earlier when we looked at that the example about uh, um finding the the error for the sql server client but uh we also have a, a number of experts that are wireless specific so we have them around around wireless security and also around wireless performance uh the great thing about 
uh, experts, especially when you're using things like the, the distributed, is those experts then are always just analyzing in the background. Um, you, we can have them send out alarms or alerts when, when those experts are triggered, send, have log, log messages when those experts are triggered. Um, so you don't have to be watching it all the time. And then the severe ones you can have, you know, notify you differently maybe than other ones. Uh, so with experts, it's, it's a great way to go fix things. If the experts are flow related, like I showed earlier, you can actually click the event. It'll show you which flows are affected. Uh, a lot of wireless experts aren't really flow based. Uh, they're just generic, right? Maybe we, we think we're sensing interference. Again, we're not, we're not, a, we're not a, um, a spectrum analyzer, so we can't, you know, outright measure interference. We look for the typical 802.11 signs of it, right? Uh, data rates are getting ratcheted down, you know, the delays are being introduced, retransmissions, those types of things. Uh, but you can say, well, look at all different types of things, you know, too many retries, too many clients. Um, so you can go uh, set things like how many clients do you want to have to access points, uh, you know, 15 clients per AP or 20 clients per AP. If it gets above that, our experts will let you know. So it does a lot of wireless analysis for you automatically um, in the background. And then voice over Wi-Fi, um, might not have mentioned at the very beginning, uh, a lot of what we do around voice over IP, we have a very extensive voice over IP analysis capability within OmniPeak, and that pertains to wired or wireless. Uh, and, and the great thing about it is that it does pertain and come all the way over to wireless as well. Um, so, um, and, and, the, and the, the interesting thing about it when, when we look at it in terms of wireless is um, it's really not very different when you look at a voice over Wi-Fi uh, call rather than when you look at a, a regular voice call. So, did I leave that open? Maybe I didn't. All right. And how granular is your link analysis going to be? Microsoft link. Yes. We, yeah, we don't have link support today. Have, yeah, link support today. We can decode it, I believe. We just added a decode for it, but in the VoIP um, analysis, we don't support. And, and, when, I, you're, and I, when you're doing your wireless analysis of VoIP traffic, are you, I mean, Obviously, if I'm doing dot one x, it becomes a lot more challenging to decode those packets over the air. Are you capturing that from the wired side, or um, in this particular case, we could capture it from either side. This particular, what we consider it to be vo five, we we consider it to be capturing from the wireless side. So you're right; it will be more difficult because if they're you know if they're encrypted and it's and it's you know, enterprise level encryption, then we won't get all that. But we do also, when we do our voice analysis, though we, we try to get the data when we can from the packets themselves, if, if that isn't working for us, we'll also pull the packets out of the RTCP packets. So, which, you know, so we'll, we'll at least get some of the analysis, but, it, you know, it, but now you're depending on RTPC itself. Yeah. Or RTCP. Um, so, you go into our Voice area, Make some video calls. So this was only just one call, but I mean the neat thing about it that I wanted to show you is when you when you actually drill in and look at a call. Um, you know, this is you know one of the features within our voice over IP where we can track it down. You know, packet by packet. So I mean, to your point, even about it, the, the encryption. You know, most of this up on top. That's all kind of set up, and it would all be, you know, something that we could pick up anyway. It's all just the, the, the call setup and teardown packets. And then in here is where we uh, would show things like a jitter and uh, R factor and that kind of thing graphed over the time of the call. So you can get a very, very detailed view of voice over IP. And the thing, you know, like I said about, about voice and, and, uh, and, and VoIP or, or Wi-Fi, uh, really not terribly different besides, uh, besides that proxy authentication required and the act underneath it. That would be the only two packets that are different between that and, and a VoIP call. So it's really, uh, it's very flexible uh, and a very great way to, to be able to, to leverage OmniPeak as well. And near the end here. You know, and certainly one of the other areas is uh, wired versus wireless. So 
you know, we talked talk a little bit about this, but not too much, but also having that capability to use the same software to capture everything we've talked about wirelessly here, but then also to be able to be on the wired side of the access point, or maybe even just further upstream at the wired switch or whatever, and still compare that traffic can be very, very useful. Uh, again, from that perspective that in a lot of, a lot of cases, to to analyze the wireless side, you're probably looking at the protocol side. And if you're looking at the application side, you can look further up the stack on the wired side. That's not really going to matter. Um, if you're looking for uh, authentication issues, even if you are using enterprise, you know, there's still a lot of things you can tell by looking at the wireless and the wired side. If they're not authenticating correctly, you can at least see if those authentication authentication packets are making it back to the authentication server or not when you look at the wired side. Uh, and one of the things that we, we have within OmniPeak uh, is an ability to compare once, if you do save the files um, in... Uh so if you do save the files, uh, as you've done here, and you have, you have a, you know, the, the wireless version, so from the wireless side, um, and then we also open the same file from the wireless side. Which one did which? When we go uh, look at our wireless file, if we go into our, our expert area and we get down to the individual flows that are there, um, we can do a compare between the wireless and the wired side. So the wireless is on the left, we'll stick the wired file, uh, uh, wired side file on the right, and you know, b based on IP IDs and other things, we're able to very quickly show you know all the areas where we're suffering from retransmissions. So you know, it's, it's graphical, easy to see, and it, you know much more quickly highlights the problem for for users or maybe even at least for, for management. The network engineers may understand this, but they need to show it to a manager saying, well, I don't understand why, you know, why those retransmissions are such a problem. Well, you know, kind of when you show it to them in this way, all of a sudden they realize, oh, yeah, so you're saying I'm wasting all this time. It's, yeah, it's exactly what we're talking about. You're wasting all that time uh, with retransmissions. So uh, another, you know, quick analytical way, something that, that people aren't always aware of uh, with OmniPeak is that, that compare functionality. And then just from a security standpoint, we can use that uh, use it for security as well. Um, in our wireless land view, it's, it's very easy to go in and set uh, the trust level, which is in this column, so we know, uh, you know, basically who's trusted, uh, you know, for the, for the areas that we know, like this was a capture from this building, and this is John Muir Health. Um, they're a floor below us, so, yep, to me, they're known access points, they're known stations. I, I can't do anything about them, but I know who they are. So, uh, and then, you know, again, upstairs from us, same thing, known that Central Garden and Pet, they're upstairs, they're, you know, they're known. Uh, and then it makes it very easy, once we've done this categorization to go in, when we see rogues, you know, ac or new access points that maybe one of our, uh, our neighbors does introduce, uh, maybe we want to see that, maybe they're introducing AC, uh, and all of a sudden, you know, it could start uh, uh, affecting our own five gigahertz network, or et cetera, or there are rogues that come in, uh, we can see that as well. Uh, we'll look for ad hoc networks, and all that kind of stuff. So um, from a security standpoint, also uh, uh, very, very flexible. So with that, uh, I'm going to wrap up. So there's a lot of advantages that we see to, to using uh, wild packets and OmniPeak. Um, certainly the remote data capture from the commercial APs, we spent a fair bit of time on that today. Uh, we were the first to support uh, capture analysis of 802.11ac. We know we're not the only ones now, but uh, we were the first ones there. Um, and still, you know, if people are still on N, you know, there's still not a lot of flexibility out there for capturing N at 3Stream. Our Omni Wi-Fi is one of the few devices out there that we know of that, that they're doing that as well. Even the ERP caps are only at 2Stream. Um, the VoFi analysis that we just talked to him about, uh, our industry-leading UI, really makes it very easy to troubleshoot. Uh, you know, simple clicks, right clicks, get you right to where you need to be. Uh, we had our multi-channel analysis, which we talked about, and, and roaming, which we demonstrated. Uh, and then, of course, just demonstrated both the, the wired and wireless side for a, a complete network analysis, all with a single uh, product and platform.